switch Bibles. It seems like so long since I've seen y'all. It does. That's a good thing, though. You know, I'm, I'm, I want to get used to going to church. <laughs> hey, Mother Brace, how you doing? Good, good, good to see y'all. I had a better Christmas because I'm, 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 the Lord is helping me to understand Christmas better. Uh, and this is what he gave me, Mother Bracey, and that is, is that you can't find Jesus in Christmas, but you can, it's a, you can't find Jesus in Christmas, but you can find Christmas in Jesus. Amen. And actually, that's just, it, 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 it's, it's false. When people tell us that Jesus is the reason for the season, and it's about the birth of Christ and the little nativity scene and all of that. That's, that's not, that's false. The Bible never teaches you to have a holiday and to celebrate Jesus' birth. That's just something that was made up. But now, Christmas is real. Christmas is a wonderful time of the year. It's a time of the year when people are kinder than they are usually. When people give to folks that are less fortunate than them. It's a time when family can get together. And because we're so busy, people going this way and going that way, and we all have our own lives, and we get a chance to come together and reminisce and you know, talk about when we were younger and things that happened, and it's just a fun, fun time. And so when you know the truth, when you know the truth, give me John, John the eighth chapter. When you know the truth, the thing about it, Pharaoh, you can't be afraid of the truth. Uh, <laughs> my daddy told me that the truth will make you free, but he said it'll first hurt you. He said it'll first hurt you. And, and so uh, uh, let's look at John, the eighth chapter. And look at, let's see, the 30th verse. The Bible says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. We talked the other day about a uh, sermon of uh, God must be believed in the No Options uh, series. And uh, how many enjoyed that message? Anybody? Uh, I listened at it this morning as I exercised and it helped the time to go faster. I listened at it again. And I believe that. I believe that that's an absolute mother brewer that without faith it is impossible to please God. I'm so glad to know that because many things that you have, I just don't have. Talents that you have, I don't have. So uh, Sometimes I don't have money. I, I just don't. And that's the reason that I'm glad that here we don't put people on front street about money because that's embarrassing. You see, you can't look at me and tell what I have. Uh, I just may not have it. And so church should not be a place where you uh, uh, expose the fact that I'm running short this week's money on money. You shouldn't be. And so sometimes I don't even have money to give God, give in church or, or whatever. But I can always uh, take God at his word. Oh, yes, sir. And I honor God when I do that, Lady Depper. I don't honor God because you read a scripture and I stand up while you're doing it. That, that's a show. That's a show. I'm just doing something to make it seem like that I'm a, a godly or I reverence God or, or whatever. But I honor God's word yes, sir. when no matter what Sister Nella Trice it looks like, yes, I trust God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it, it does not seem like that my needs are going to be met, but God says oh, that yes. I shall supply all of your needs yes. according to uh, his riches in glory. I heard somebody say last night, Robert, you were there as well. Uh, she said, I don't have all I want, but I got all I need. And I hear you say sometime, Robert, that you learned how to differentiate your wants from your needs. And in God, God can bring you to a place of contentment, mother. To a place of contentment. But in ourselves, in our flesh, can't nobody please us. It don't make no difference what we have or where we are. We're always discontented. And so then I thank the Lord that I know today that God desires for me to trust him and to take him at his word. I'm also glad, Sister Jackie, that I'm at a place where 
I don't have a leader who is telling me that God does not mean what he says. Because you see, you confuse me when you do that. You confuse me. Lady Deborah used to do that sometimes uh, when we were raising the children come up. She would tell me, she said, hold on, because I'm soft-hearted. And I would be in Brother Joyce King. I would be in from what we, you know, she, Lady Devil was rigid. She said, no, you can't. That's how it is, and that's how it's going to be. But I get soft-hearted, you know. Well, no, they've been long enough. Let's do this. She said, no, you're sending mixed messages. And so when we tell, when we have somebody that tells us, okay, God means this, but over here he doesn't mean that, then you confuse me. But when I understand that when God says something, he means it. He means just what he said. Then I can begin, uh, Brother Jeremy, to trust him. I can begin to, even though I can't see my way, I don't walk by sight, but I walk by faith. It's also a leveling ground. I have never liked about church how we, even in church, we come in and we got certain folks that's up here. And we got other folks that's not so, not, not there. But any of us can believe God. Any of us can believe God. John 8, chapter the third verse, he said, As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples or my students indeed. You see, we've been trying to make disciples of folks that didn't even know the word. We've been trying to make disciples, and actually, Brother Brimley, we were not trying to make them disciples of God, we were trying to make them disciples of ourselves. It seems like some of the most insecure folk want to be pastors. It seems like some of the most uh, uh, unsure folk want to tell you, it seems like they want you to lift them up and make them be, be something. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's a hurting thing. He says in verse 32, and you shall know, you shall know, the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, this word no is comes from the Greek word gnoski, which means to uh, over a period of time things that you learn. You ever been on a new job and you had to learn your job and you felt more comfortable after doing that knowledge there came from continually coming and being taught. And what G this, this is the word here. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Have you experienced that? Yeah. Yeah. Have you experienced that? You see, and what we want to talk about tonight, in a way, I guess, if we get that, is, is, is uh, two things. One is uh, they didn't know, and the second one is by grace. They didn't know, and by grace. I, I finally got to the place, Deborah, that if you don't know, you can't teach me. We got too many people trying to tell us things, and they don't know. How, how can you teach me something that you don't know? Jesus said this about the Pharisees. He said they be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, what's going to happen? They both fall in a ditch. Ain't you glad you're at the ditch? You see, I don't follow you because uh, uh, you wear sharp suits. I don't follow you because you, 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 you have, uh, you're able to harm. You, uh, I don't follow you because you, you, know, you look like a preacher. I follow you because... Uh, uh, you got a title, you apostle or bishop or whatever, in order for me to follow you, you have to know where you're going. Because otherwise, neither one of us don't end up anywhere. Um, so he said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Let's turn over to Acts the 16th chapter. Acts the 16th chapter. We're ending the year. We've been talking about how God works. Um, very elementary. I think all of us know it now, don't we? Pretty much. And that is the Father works through the Son. The Son works through the Spirit. Uh, the Spirit works through the Word. I say it, everybody know, but I can't come over here and look at it. <laughs> the Word works through the believer, and the believer works through his faith. And so, once, Jeremy, I know how something works, then I can put my best efforts toward it. It's hard when you are laboring and you're not getting anywhere. Uh, I feel like now that I'm on the right road and I'm getting somewhere. Um, let's see, where, where do I want to go? 
Acts 17th chapter. Did I say 16 or 17? So, okay, let, give me 17. Acts 17 and 22. I want to read this verse, then I want to back up. Acts 17 and 22. This is after Paul has got the call from um, Asia over into Europe, and he's gone through Philippi and uh, down through Macedonia, and now he's down in uh, Athens. And so, you with me? Acts 17 and 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. That word superstitious in the Greek is the same word that we have for religion. Religion. He says, I perceive or I see or I understand that you are too superstitious. Do you know that when you are religious, you think that there's something magical about your religiosity? It's a certain way that you do stuff. I know one time uh, I went over to take a circumvent over to a man that was in, in his house. And uh, I think I gave him the, 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 the juice before I gave him the bread. And he didn't even want it. No, 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 no. You, you, you got to get a bread first before you get a juice. And I went ahead and did it like he wanted to. But what I'm thinking is, is that I thought enough of you to come over here to bring this to you, to do this. I, could, I had a lot of things to do. But all you were concerned about was, is there's some kind of magic in the order in which you do it. Uh, when you are religious, then you, 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 won't, you can't touch this table. Uh, I can remember people saying the children would run through the pulpit and the preacher would have a fit and everything. You don't come up here. This is, this is God's sacred desk up, up, up here. And so Paul is talking to them. And what we are understanding is, is how God works. Since I've been over here cricket at Manasseh, I've come to learn. Uh, we had Acts 17.22, right? Tish. Oh, we had Acts 17.22. Okay, give me Acts 2.8 real quick. What I've come to understand is, is that God works by grace. That God does not work through any effort of me. It makes no difference whether I uh, 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 walk backwards coming down the aisle or I walk forwards going down the aisle. It's not me, it's God. God is the one who effects whatever needs to be done in my life. As a matter of fact, Nothing happens in your life until you stop doing. As long as you trying to put the cigarettes down, as long as you trying to stop cussing, as long as you stop trying to do this right here, you're frustrated. Because Paul says in Acts the seventh chapter, he said, the things that I said that I'm not going to do, I find myself doing. Oh, wretched man, who shall deliver me from this body of death? He said, now the will is present, but how? I can't find how. So we, we can't help ourselves. So that's the reason that we don't know. Uh, what did I say? I said Acts 2 and 8. I mean Ephesians 2 and 8. That's like coming, it don't look right to me. <laughs> Ephesians 2 and 8. Don't y'all think that's one of the biggest mistakes of churches uh, is that they don't know that God works by grace? That they think that it's something that you do in order. And sometimes, like, and I keep picking on this right here because it's just something that I see. I don't visit many churches anyway. But uh, I go ahead and stand up anyway because I don't want to offend anybody. But, you know, it get on my nerve when they start reading the scripture and they want everybody to stand up. And they look at you like you're crazy when you don't. And to me, they, they kind of make you feel like you don't love God if you don't stand up. You know? And, and my love for God doesn't have anything to do with me standing up while you're reading the Bible. It has nothing to do with it. But they're just like those men in Athens. They're too superstitious and they are religious. Uh, Acts 2.8. Uh, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith. By believing what God says and by God's grace. 
And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus on the good works which God have ordained uh, before but before ordained that we should walk in them. So then, God does nothing through our own efforts, but God does everything through grace. Take me back to Acts 17. Paul says, then Paul, uh, the Bible says, then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, you men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious, for as I pass by, and beheld your devotion. I found an inscript, an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. So then, Mother Nun, it is possible to worship God, but to do it ignorantly. And where do you get by worshiping God ignorantly? You don't get anywhere. You can keep going to church. You can keep getting your money. You can uh, uh, be on every uh, board. You can be in every uh, uh, ministry. But, but Paul here says, he says, I perceive that in all things you are too religious. Uh, too, you know, God doesn't really do anything until we stop. God can't really help me until I realize that I can't help myself. You, you ever tried to come up to somebody and they didn't know what they were doing and you tried to talk to them and while you trying to talk to them, you could tell while you were talking to them that they were still, they weren't paying you any attention. They were thinking the whole time about it and, and then before you could get through, they said, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And sooner or later, you just had to back off from them and they said, well, you just, you can have it. But when I realized that God is such a God that, that, that he will not allow me to help him with what he does because if I help God with what he does when the job is done I must get some credit I must get some credit if I help to God and so now God fixes it well no matter how smart you are no matter how diligent that you are that God fixes it where everything that you do come to nothing you see, everybody that really know God know that they didn't have nothing to do with what God did in their life. Everybody that really know God, you don't have to call their name because they realize I don't deserve any credit. I was a wretch undone. I did all that I knew to try to straighten my life up. I tried to stop. I tried to turn around. Every time I found myself kept doing the same thing over and over again. But the moment that I gave it over to the Lord, and I quit trying to fight it, that is when God came in. God gave me grace to help. God works by grace. Let me tell you what happens when God grace come into your life. When God grace come into your life, the things that you were struggling with ain't no struggle no more. When God grace come into you, because God's grace transforms. God's grace makes you a new creature. Give me 2 Corinthians 5. Please. God's grace gives, makes you a new creature. And when God gets through, Jeremy, his aim is, is that when he gets through, that you won't get any credit. Because what he does, he does it by grace. But the problem is, is that the people that have taught us, they didn't know. They didn't know. And also, I found this out, Cricket. That just because somebody don't know nothing don't mean they won't that don't mean they won't stop talking. You ever seen that? You listen to somebody and they just talking, talking, talking. You're like they don't know what in the world they talking about. I mean, you don't really know, but you know they don't know. And you like because some folks just like to hear themselves talk. And you like that folks here. But see, when you get on the right road. You get on the right road, and some folks say, Vander, you, say, you just so bold. I just, no, I ain't so bold. I got the right whooping. I followed the wrong folk long enough. I had to get up this morning. At 9 o'clock, I had to be in, in North Little Rock uh, on a capital murder case. And uh, lady, uh, and I really believe she's innocent, and, and she, she's in jail and everything. And I sat down with her, and I told her, I said, you know why you're in jail, don't you? She said, well, no. I said, well, you need to know why you're in jail. 
She said, why, see, you in jail because when your mama told you to leave that other woman alone, you didn't leave her alone. Now, even though you didn't kill the people, uh, but if you had left her alone, you see? So now, sooner or later, I need to begin to take right instructions on my life if I want a better life. And my instructions in the church is, if you don't know what you're talking about, you can't tell me nothing. I'm sorry. And, and then I don't care. And then they use this thing, Mother Brace, about fellowship. They use this thing about we, we don't fool with you no more. Well, you see, the thing about it, I've been in Manassas long enough to know that's a blessing. It, it ain't nothing but a blessing that you don't talk to me no more. It ain't nothing but, nothing but a blessing. And I sure don't worry about you running and telling somebody else. I used to worry about what they're going to go tell somebody else. I don't even worry about that no more. Because you see, you take garbage, you take garbage to garbage cans. And if they want that garbage, then they ain't nothing but a garbage can no way. Because folks that's going somewhere, you can't bring them garbage time you try to bring it to them, they say, well, baby, you know what? I don't know him like that. So, you know, really, let's talk about the Lord or something. I, I don't really even want to talk about that foolishness. But it takes something. The Bible said that the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. It takes something. You ain't just getting ready to sashay off into this right here. You got to make your mind up. Say, God, I live. God, I die. God, whether they want to deal with me or don't want to deal with me, but I need a better life and I'm tired. I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of being tossed to and fro with every wind and doctrine. Not only do I want a better life, but I want a better life for my family. And you see, your family is following you. And if you follow in foolishness, guess where they going? You got people that admire you and they looking at you and they figure that if you follow it, well, it must be okay. Paul says here, uh, whom you ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world. No, I told you 2 Corinthians, didn't I? 2 Corinthians 5. Uh, let's, let's go down to about, about 17. You there? Here the Bible says, therefore if any man be in Christ, and how do I get in Christ? I get in Christ by believing the gospel, believing it unto my heart. He is a new creature, uh, a new creation. You see, grace makes me something different. You see, they have told us in church that we are to try to be like Jesus. You can't be like Jesus. You can't do nothing. And that's actually what God is trying to bring you to. The Bible said that the law is a schoolmaster. Okay, let me just put it in, in, in just our everyday terms. How long you been driving? 20 years? 10 years? 2 years? 30 years? Uh, they got a law. They got some speed signs up. How's that working out? Hmm. How's that working? Hmm. I know one time, Cricket, I was trying to get off a of crack, and uh, I had made up my mind I was getting ready to keep the law. I was going to do everything right. I wasn't going to do nothing wrong. That's going to get me off a of crack. And Brother Percy and I were going to uh, Philadelphia, and I was driving <laughs> Philadelphia about 1,100 miles from here, and I was going to drive the speed limit all the way. Shoot. And he was sleepy because he was working and whatever. I had no job. I was on crack. And he, but I, he person, person woke up, we hadn't gotten no fun about 100 miles down the road. He said, all right, man, give me the car. <laughs> he drove the rest of the way to Philadelphia. <laughs> we cannot keep the law. The moment that I realize who I am and who God is, that I cannot do it, but God can. God's grace can come into my life and he can make the foolish wise. God can take, and that's the reason that people that are wise already, it's hard for them to accept grace. Isn't it funny, y'all, that we got churches set up in, God, in God's name. They got all kind of holy names, the holiness church, and God in Christ, and all kind of names, and yet they still don't understand that God works by his grace. All God wants us to, real, uh, to, to admit is, is that we, we can't do it, God. God, we've tried our best. 
to be perfect. We've tried our best to live according to the law. We've tried our best not to do anything wrong. Like Lady Deborah said, sometimes you could be down on your knees praying and Lord have mercy. What come to your mind? But the funny thing about it is, is that the moment that I will admit that I can't do it, something called grace comes in and finds me and strengthens me and changes me. Thank God for his grace. So he says, old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new and all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. What is reconciliation? Reconciliation is balancing and making things right and, and, and now everything is, is righteous. And we've been all messed up in church about that word righteous because we don't know exactly what make a person righteous. Uh, do, you, do, do you not cut your hair? Do you not wear fingernail polish? Uh, do, do you not wear a certain length of a dress? We, we really don't know what make a man righteous. Well, do, do we have, have to be here every time that the door is open? Do we give 10%? Do, uh, do he, does he give? What, what makes a man righteous? Does he start preaching? What, what makes a man righteous? We, we've been taught a whole, whole lot of stuff. And actually what we end up is self-righteous. Because now if I'm a woman and I don't wear no pants and, and I wear a shirt, I wear a dress, when I see you with pants on, then I condemn you. I condemn you. Uh, then if I don't wear lipstick or anything, I say, when well, you got lipstick on, you Jezebel. I condemn you. But you see, get, run, run over to Romans 10 for me. I'm glad to be over here because there's so many things I was fair I was confused about. And it was what I was taught. And that's the reason I'm very careful today about who teach me. And I don't care that you don't like it. I learned to live without so many so-called friends. I don't need so many friends. I need to live better. The, the life I live today, I love it, y'all. Most of the time, I'm by myself. And, and I, I really I likes it. I likes it because sometimes when you got folks in the car with you and everything, turn it down or whatever. No, I turn it up loud I want to. I listen to this and listen to that. You ain't got nothing to say about it. Thank you, Jesus. Carry too many folks along with you. What did I tell y'all? Romans 10. I look at Romans 10. They didn't know. And what makes it so bad, mother, they won't let you tell them. And the Bible says that if a man is a heretic, a, man, a heretic is a person that will not uh, stand sound doctrine. You see, not only are there people that don't know, you got people that don't want to know. They don't want to know. And so once that you show them, see, the, the Bible says after the, a man is a heretic, after the first or second admonition, reject him. If you're dealing with somebody and you're showing them right in the Bible what the Bible says, and they don't want to accept it, leave them folk alone. You walk off from that. You see, because God has called us under peace. God ain't called me to sit around the Bible shop and argue the Bible with nobody. If you want to be ignorant, then God bless you. But Paul says, I bear in my body the marks, the cross. I only will glory in the cross. I ain't finna glory in no little baby that's in, a, that's in a manger with three wise men around. Where that's going? Where in the world is that going? The Christmas story, little Jesus sitting in the... Thank you, Jesus. That will not free nobody. But I want you to know that he, they, they put a rugged cross up on a hill. They stretched them high and they hung. Thank you, Jesus. The blood came streaming down. That blood, if I put my faith in that blood, not in myself, not what I can do, not how strong I done got. But if I put my faith, Mother Nun, in the blood, that blood has power. That blood will transform me. That God, that blood will give me a new life. It'll give me a new life. Uh, look what Paul says here in Romans, the 10th chapter. He said, brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record they have a zeal for God. A zeal for God. You see, it ain't in how, how high you jump. It ain't in all how the, the, the guitar and, and the drums and, and, and whatever. The Church of God in Christ had a, a, a great increase in their membership uh, in the 70s. 
They were, they were shunned. They, they were back rude people. They, 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 would, they would talk about them. They, these old sanctified folk, Baptist folk would talk about them. They backwards and all that. But that thing caught on. And they had a great increase in membership. And you see, what churches is, is that folks, they carnal. They love the membership and they love the money. I've seen preachers, Baptist preachers sit around. They won't even go to work. They just sit around and drink coffee and talk about how many folks that they, I baptized 10, Doc. And, and I bought, and then they go to laughing about how they holler and how they had a folk falling out and, and all that kind of foolishness. Because that's what they're concerned about. But you know what? I'm glad to be over here in Manassas because I got my family somewhere where folk care about my people. I don't care about how many folks here. I don't care about how big the building is. I want to be somewhere where somebody concerned about me. I want to be somewhere where you care about me. Aren't you tired of being around folk don't care about you? It's hard when you're around people don't care about you. You can't, you can't give them enough money. You, you, can't, you can't pat them on the back enough. If they don't care about you, they just don't care about you. Ain't no God in it nowhere, but I want you to know God is love. You see, and you see, Mother Nun, I have to understand that God works by grace because God is a God of love. And you see, love is all about grace. Love, love is about grace. What's so good about being dealing with somebody, Mother Bracey, that love you is, is that even when you get unlovely, even when you're ugly, even when you mess up, even when you ain't pretty, you're still good. You're still good, when you, even when you ain't got what you used to have. Uh, even when you, you know, the, when you're dealing with somebody that loves you, you're good. Because they don't love you because you look good. They don't love you because you got this money. They, don't, they just love you. And you see, God is love. And so then God's trying to get to us. I don't deal with you because of nothing about you. I deal with you because I love you. And see, God's love had to get to me past church folk. Because God saved me by grace through faith, not none of myself. It didn't have nothing to do with a human being. It didn't have nothing to do with me. God just saved me out of his love. And I got to fool it with you church folks and y'all started putting qualifications that you got to do this and you got to do that. And if you don't do this, then God ain't satisfied or whatever. I can only please God through my faith. Some kind of way, God gave me a childlike faith in the, in the vision. It was an Easter morning, a vision of Jesus up on the cross and his blood being shed. And I believed on the blood that he shed that it was sufficient for my sins. And just through that, God took me and baptized me into the body of Christ. And then, like the Galatians, I come into your, uh, your assembly and you begin to try to Judaize me and tell me I got to keep the law. You tell me that I got to come to the district meeting. I got to come to the missionary. I ain't never knew. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Then you got so many titles of folks. You got some folks sitting over here in some white dresses. They the missionaries, evangelist missionaries. And, and thank you, Jesus. Aspiring missionaries. And then you got some, Pharaoh, got a collar around here and every. Thank you, Jesus. Paul talked to the Corinthians and he says, he says, I'm afraid of you. He said, I begot you in the simplicity of Christ. And, and now you have become corrupted. Man will corrupt your relationship with God. And that's the reason that you have to hold on. It's even the same way in marriage. When you are married, you have to guard the relationship that you have with your wife. Because now mama and grandfolk and people try to get in folks' ears and, and talking and whatever. You can't let nothing get in between that. Because he said, these two shall be one flesh. And so I have to always understand that God operates by grace. God never operates through our uh, abilities. He said, for I bear them record, they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And that's the reason Mother, Mother Brewer is so important that I understand how God works. That God the Father is the elector. And he elects and he chooses whom he will. Have you ever wondered why God did you choose me? 
Have you, have you ever thought about that, you know, especially when you first got saved and you started falling down and you, you get to messing up and stuff like that and you say, Lord, you shouldn't have chosen me because look what I've done and, and how I see. But then as you grow on to know God, you begin to realize that God does not operate out of you, but he operates out of his love. God works through grace. And so God is trying to show you that there was nothing in you that made him decide to elect you, but it was everything was in him. Also, you begin to realize that God can see around corners and God knows that God knows where you're going to be. You see, all we know is where we are today. And sometimes we become discouraged because of our walk and say, Lord, I ain't going to never do better. And Lord, look like I can't. But you see, God knows that further on down the road that you're going to meet somebody else that's stumbling. And if you stumble yourself, then you won't put your nose up at them and say, how could you do this? Out of all God done for you. But you will turn around and tell them, say, baby, say, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask God thank. And so you may be stumbling, you may be weak today, but God is able to strengthen you. Just like he told Paul, Brother Brimley, he said that when you are converted, he told, uh, God told Peter, he, Jesus told Peter, he said, when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. Uh, I, do I have a witness here today? I got a witness that said, Lord, it's not through my triumph, but it's through my downfalling that has made me useful under God. Are you able to tell a person, say, baby, just because you're here today, don't mean that this is the end of your journey. That God ain't through with you yet. If God helped me through what I went through, God will help you too. Is that, do I have anybody here honest enough that you'll tell somebody, say, baby, oh, I have not always been what you see right now. I have not always stood up, but God never left me. God never forsake me. I can join with Paul and say that I'm persuaded that neither powers, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come. Now nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. God's love is something else. He works through his grace. He says, look at verse three, for they being ignorant, of God's righteousness. I may be wrong, but this, I'm just persuaded of this, Lady Deborah, that most people today are willingly ignorant. Because you, we have the world wide web. You can get on the internet and find almost anything. But you know what? The only thing that God can't help is a stubborn and uncircumcised heart. If you so if you so steadfast in what you believe and what you are, God can't help you because God must be believed that when you find the light, you have to walk in the light. And later, devil, you have to be like this. Say, God, anyway, you bless me. See, you can't be like this right here where you know what? I hear mother none, but Lady Deborah can't tell me nothing. <laughs> because God's going to test you. God's going to bring somebody that you don't want to hear nothing from. But I'm tell you what, when you see the light, you need to walk in the light. Uh, I don't care who they are. Because you see, we don't know nobody no way. We got our perception that some of who we really think is somebody ain't nobody. And some of the folk we think ain't nobody is highly esteemed with God. He said they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. You church folks had messed me up. They were ignorant. And then the ignorant trying to teach me. Thank you, Jesus. What would make you listen to somebody that didn't know what they were talking about? I don't care what their title is. And do you know what? We live in a day and time now where folk giving themselves title. I didn't even know Baptist churches had bishops. I didn't. But like I said, the Church of God in Christ had so much success at what they were doing, they have copied everything that was in the Church of God in Christ. You ain't see all them drums and guitars and all that in no Baptist church. They had an old uh, uh, piano, maybe, maybe an organ. They had a piano. Now they got guitars, they got that, and now they dancing up and down the thing, and just, just a whole lot of confusion. I done gone to the serving fabric. And I'm sitting up there making my head hurt. I'm sitting making my head hurt. I ain't impressed with all this noise y'all got. I said, say something. Give me the word. Tell, tell me something that I can believe. I'm not coming here to get drunk. I'm not done. I didn't come in here to get off in a fantasy world or whatever. If, that, if that's the case and everything, I, I, I thank you, Jesus. I got a better place to go. 
he says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. Now, what's so important about this? Coming and studying God's word and getting understanding. Because if you do not know what God's righteousness is, then you will go and establish your own righteousness. And y'all, like I say, I keep picking on that, that stuff about standing up while you're reading the word and stuff like that. That's what that is. That is some kind of right. Why are we doing it? That? That, that's a righteousness. In other words, this, I'm, I'm establishing my own righteousness, being ignorant of God's righteousness. God's righteousness comes through what Jesus Christ did on the cross and me believing it. When I believe the gospel, then he makes me righteous. I can't make myself righteous. If I make myself righteous, then I'm self-righteous. And that's when the end up, Robert, don't nobody at family, don't nobody want to deal with me. Because you know what? All I'm interested in doing is, is, is bringing you over to my church. That's all I want to do. I don't, it don't make no difference how good your church is, make no difference what's going on. You ain't right because you ain't over here with us. Establishing our own righteousness. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone that believes. My last scripture. Let's, let, let me go over to uh, Galatians, please. By grace, God works through grace. I'm so glad to know today that it has nothing to do with me. And see, there's nothing that God can't do through in your life. Nothing. There's nothing that God can't do in your life by grace. God can give you grace to help in a time of trouble. Whatever it is, whatever the struggle is, whatever it is that, 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 that you can't overcome, grace will help you over that hurdle. But it's hard getting to his grace because it's something about us. We want to do it. I want to do it. Tell God, go help the bad. Don't help me. I'm okay. Look how strong I am. Uh, what did I say? Galatians? Okay. Let's, let's try Galatians 6 and 12. Appreciate y'all for your patience. Thank you. Galatians 6 and 12. You with me? Here the Bible says, For as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. They want you to do something so you'll make a show in the flesh. But you suffer persecution for the cross of Christ when you tell them, say, I ain't got to do nothing. I don't have to do anything. The finished work of the cross, God, what you did was good enough. Amen. I'm glad to be at a place now where I can stand in church and tell, say, look, I ain't got to do nothing. If I don't never come back to church no more, I'm good. I'm all right. That ain't going to save me. Coming to church ain't going to save me. Giving money ain't going to save me. Uh, or none of that ain't going to save me. Uh, the only thing that will save me is what Jesus did on the cross. He's my savior. I'm not my own savior. I can't save myself. I tried to save myself. But see, the Galatians, what happened was he saved them. Then they tried to, they tried to okay, God, move out the way. Now I'm going to finish the job for you. You couldn't save yourself. How can you keep yourself? I'm kept by his grace. See, grace keeps me from, 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 uh, from falling back into the ways uh, that, that I was in. Grace, not, not me. He says, um, what verse am I? For neither they, them, they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I don't glory in anything. I don't, I don't have any confidence in anything but what Jesus did upon the cross by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Now, every church has said that, but then they won't act like it. You said that, but then you won't believe it. You said that, but th then they'll say, yeah, but you got to do this. But, but when you use the word but, then you, you, you knock out everything that went before it. Say, I'm going I'm to give you this right here, but no, I don't want to hear the but. God ain't got no but in it. He says, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. 
See, that's what happened, Lady Deborah. When I got over here and I began to glory in the cross, that's what freed me from Negroes. That's what it says right there. He don't say it like that, but that's what he's saying. He says, by whom the world is crucified unto me. Crucified means dead. You don't bother me. I don't miss you. I don't want your company. All you're doing is pulling me down. You need to listen to me. You want me to listen to you. But really, you need to listen to me. Oh, ignorant me. Oh, oh nobody me. Uh, God decided to get, get, put a message in me that will help you if you would hear it. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Go down to verse 17. He says, from henceforth, let no man trouble me. I'm living 100% on God's grace. By grace, all I got to do is quit. quit. Quit depending on myself and wholly lean and depend on Jesus. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Clap your hands for the Lord.